Hi, I'm Abba Shapiro, and this week we're going to look at when to use the Clone and Stamp tool and when to use the Erase tool to remove unwanted objects in your images. Now, if you want to be notified when we post new tips and tutorials, remember to hit the subscribe button below. And if you like this video, well, you know what to do. So here I have this great image that I shot in Puerto Rico, and I really like it because the colors really popped and the model was really blown away by all the blues and yellows in the image. But I'm distracted by several things. There's this black post on the sidewalk that's bothering me. I have a satellite dish and some wires in the upper left hand corner and I have a person starting to walk into frame. So I want to remove those objects before I start processing the image. Let's take a look at some of our options. Now, the first thing I would do is I would crop the image the way I want it to finally be. And the reason I do that is because I then don't have to unnecessarily remove objects that are already cropped out. For instance, I'll probably crop this with a square framing so I can post it to Instagram. And this person is unlikely to be in the image. So let's do our cropping first. Now to crop, I simply go up to the tools menu and choose the crop tool. And since I want this to be a perfect square, I'll go over to the aspect ratio and choose one by one square. And we can see that now I can move the image around underneath the crop and frame it the way I like it. Now, I could leave it the way it is right here, but I actually want it to be a little bit tighter. So I'm gonna bring down the size of this square and reposition my image in the frame. Now, I like the way this works. I'm gonna make it just a little bit smaller. Bring her down over here, there we go. And what you'll notice is this person's pretty much outside of the shot. So that's a lot less work than I have to do. Once I get my cropping the way I like it, I simply hit the Enter key and Luminar will crop my image. And I'm ready to start erasing or clone and stamping. Now, there is a difference between those two and sometimes it works better for one type of problem and other times for other types of problems. So the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and remove maybe the satellite dish and these wires. And the erase tool will work really well for that because what it does is it looks for the pixels around what I'm looking to erase and replaces the pixels that I'm erasing with those adjacent pixels. And this is not that complex of an area, it's pretty much a white wall. If I went down here to the sidewalk, I definitely have a pattern here. And if I use the erase tool, it'd be a little more problematic. So let's go ahead and jump into the erase tool and remove these objects. To access the erase tool, I once again go to the tools menu and I choose erase and Luminar will open up a new layer where I can start erasing things. Once this is here, I can simply paint out what I don't like. Now, if I want to, and I do want to, is I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. If I hit Control-1 or Command-1, it'll zoom my image to 100%. And if I hold down the space bar, I can simply get a hand and drag the image to where I see what I want to erase. If I wanna zoom in a little bit more, Control-plus will zoom me in, Command-plus on a Mac, and of course, Minus will zoom me out. So I'm gonna hit Control-plus, zoom in, press the space bar, and now I can really see what I want to erase. If you want to paint a straight line, simply paint that first point, hold down the shift key, and click on the end. Now I'm gonna make this a little bit wider, so I'm gonna click here again, and on the end, and on the top, and on the end, and the nice thing about the erase tool is I can do it progressively. I don't need to go ahead and choose all the things I want to erase. I can pick a section and that's the best way to work and then simply press erase. And I can see if it did what I liked. And as you can see, that wire is gone. Let me go ahead and grab this other wire. And again, holding down the shift key, I can draw some straight lines. And I'm going to hit erase again. So my wires are now gone. I'm ready to go ahead and remove the satellite dish. I'm gonna go ahead and make my brush bigger. And to do that, I can 
either hit the bracket keys, the left and right bracket keys on your keyboard, the right bracket key will make this bigger, the left bracket key would make it smaller. I could also go here to the size drop down and make my brush larger. Now I'm simply going to go ahead and paint out the area that I want to remove, and that's the satellite dish. And then I click on the erase button, and poof, my satellite dish is gone. Now I can go through and remove all of the objects up here, but you know something? When I zoom out, and that's Control Zero or Command Zero on a Mac, uh, I like a little bit of these items up here. Otherwise it would be too blank, it would be too unbalanced. But I want to go ahead and I want to remove this woman and I want to remove this bar. And the thing is, is if I use the erase tool, it may not guess well. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and zoom in and I'll show you what would happen if I use the erase tool on the post. I'm going to go ahead, select it, and click erase. Now from a distance, it looks like it did a good job, but because this is so complex, it didn't quite get it. And if my viewer zooms in, they would see that I actually erased something. So let me go ahead and undo that. I'm going to undo it twice. That's Control Z or Command Z, and my post is back. And now I simply need to select the Clone and Stamp tool. Let's go up to the Tools menu. When I hit Clone and Stamp, Luminar will now make yet another layer for the cloning and stamping above my erase layer. And now I'm going to hold down the space bar, reposition this, and you'll notice it says click to set the source. So what I'm doing is I'm telling Luminar where I want the pixels to be copied from to replace this post. So I'm going to click right to the right side of the post, and now I'm going to go ahead and I have my brush. Now this is a very soft brush. I can make it a little bit bigger, and this is nice because it will blend things in. Now sometimes I keep my opacity at 100%, and it's easy to paint things over. But on some more complex areas, I like to put my opacity at like 30 or 40% and choose different areas to source my pixels from when I paint away the post. Let's go ahead and see how this works. And it's actually pretty good there. I can make my brush a little bit bigger and just go down. And because it's already kind of a complex pattern, it's really doing a nice job. Now I can go ahead, make this a little bit smaller, choose another area, and to do that I hold down the Alt key or the Option key, and then I can go ahead and paint in from another area. And very quickly paint out this post. And I have a little bit of a line there, so I'll just grab another area, lower my opacity, and kind of just smooth that out. Now if I jump back to full screen, that post is gone and I don't see that hard line. I'm going to do the same thing to remove this person from the edge of the frame. Once again, I'll choose my area by holding down the Alt key or the Option key, and I'll simply move my brush over. I'll make it a little bit smaller, and I'll paint this person out. Now I had lowered it to 40%. I'm going to bring it back to 100%, zoom in with the Command 1 or Control 1 key, and now I can simply go over and paint out this person. And the key is to select an area that matches the area that you're painting out. So I'm going to go ahead and click here, paint out a little bit, click here, paint out a little bit. Be patient when doing this and you'll get a really nice blending of your source pixels. So let's take a look at this full screen. This is great. I've removed everything. I'm ready to go on and process my image. Let me hit the Done button. And you'll notice now on the right side, you'll see all three of the layers, the original image, my erased image layer, and my clone and stamped layer. Let's take a look at the before. We'll hit this little eyeball in the upper center of the toolbar. There we have our post and our satellite dish and the person, and now they're gone. Now I'm ready to process the image to really make it pop. The first thing I like to add is the Accent AI filter because it really fixes a lot of things with one slider. Already the image is brighter and the colors are starting to pop. I'm going to move it up a little bit more. I'm really going to push this. I really want this to be a very colorful image. So there's my Accent AI filter. Let's bring in the Saturation and Vibrance filter and I'll bring my saturation up to about, I don't know, let's say about 35. So the colors really really pop, the blues and the yellows, and this is starting to become the image that I envisioned when I shot this photo. 
and I want a little clarity now, so let's add the clarity filter, and not too much. If you add too much, it looks artificial, but maybe about 15 or 16 would be pretty good, and it just sharpens everything. Let's take a quick look at the before and after. Already, I really like this image, but we're gonna take it up a notch. I want the green dress here to really be bright green. Everything has to be really bright for this image to work. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the tone filter and use smart turning because when I use smart turning, I can bring up just my shadows without affecting my highlights. So let's go ahead and add the smart tone filter and tone is found under the essentials filter section. And I'll just move smart turning to the right and you can see I can really lighten up that green dress without really blowing everything out. So I have the image pretty much the way I kind of want it, but I'm going to try some looks. And if I want to try some looks, I'm going to create just another adjustment layer because if I add a look, it's going to replace all of these filters because this is the look that I've already built in. So to add an adjustment layer, I simply hit the plus button add new adjustment layer. And now to open my looks panel, I'll go right over here to the center part of the toolbar, click on that. But what I really want is I want this super sharp look and I can find that under the essentials panel all the way to the right. And that's super sharp. And I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now it's really crisp. Let's look at that before and after I apply the look. I really like what it's doing here, but I, even want more detail. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring up the small details a little bit and I'm going to bring up the medium details a little bit. And this really sharpens the wall. Now this is great for everything around her, but I don't want her really sharp and I don't want her oversaturated, which is what this look did. So I'm going to simply mask out this look where she is. And to do that, I go right to the right of the adjustment layer. I click on the small brush. And with the brush selected, I'm now going to go over here to erase and I'm going to erase all of that sharpness and saturation from her skin. I'm going to leave it on the dress, but I'm going to remove it from her. So I'm going to go ahead, zoom in, command one, control one, make my brush a little smaller with the left bracket and make sure that I'm on erase. And let's go ahead and erase. And you can see now the skin tones coming back to exactly what I wanted before. And I'm going to do it right on her arms and then I'll do it on her legs. And if I want to see what I've erased, I can simply click on the eyeball and there we go. I've painted out or erased this from her face and her arm. And if I've missed something, the nice thing about this red overlay is I can go ahead and make sure I got the right spot. And because this is just sharpness and saturation, I don't have to be really precise. Let's go ahead, turn off that overlay, turn off my brush, and there we have the after and the before, and it just notches this up a little bit more. I really love what's happening. I'm gonna add two more filters. I'm going to go ahead and add yet another adjustment layer because I want to have this affect the image globally because I've already painted a mask. And now I'm just going to add two things. I'm going to go ahead and add another saturation vibrance filter and pull down the vibrance. And the, this will even out the colors here instead of having some that are too saturated. It'll bring it back and make it feel a little more natural. And I like this balance. I always like to try the Accent AI filter at the end of the workflow to see if it can enhance the image. So let's go ahead and add that, boost it a little bit. And I like this, it's creating some really nice contrast here. And just to make things perfect, I'll add a vignette, a little bit of a vignette there, but what I really like is adding inner light to my image, okay? And if I wanted to place the center, I can click it right over the center of her body. So this is my final image. I really like it, but let's take a look at what it looked like before and you'll see it's pretty dramatic, not only with the color, but of course we have those unwanted objects in our image. And to do that, I'll click on the eyeball. And as you can see, the original image was rather dull with all these objects in it. And now I'm done. I have this great image that really explodes to my eye that's really sharp and I don't have all those distractions. 
So if you have unwanted objects, unwanted people in your images, go ahead, use the clone and stamp tool and the erase tool. And if one tool is not working, try the other tool. It may work better for your needs. If you like this video, please go ahead and click on like. Remember to subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. I'm Abba Shapiro and thank you for watching.